Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video 11 in our SOLIDWORKS API project tracker series. At this point in time, we have all of our user forms. Between videos, I went ahead and renamed them all back to user form 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That way, the code and the functionality we won't throw up any errors. As we saw when we had custom names for the user form, it tended to produce an error when we tried to unload it from a different form. Typically when you're inside a form, you'll use unload me, but since we need to pass values back and forth between user forms, we can't clear the memory while we're still in the user form itself. We have to clear it from another user form. So it produced a little bit of a problem going back to naming them user form 123, the standard nomenclature, everything worked fine. So with all of these user forms, I've created the code in the background. Basically all we're doing is changing the value of the text boxes to an empty string when we initialize and when we click save, we're hiding the form. So it's the same thing that we did on user form two. When we looked at the code, we basically put an empty string in both of those text boxes and then we hid the form when the user clicks save. In this video, I want to handle the note functionality. Now in user form one, we have an area for a note. If the user, does not enter a note manually, we want to be able to prompt them again to say, hey, you didn't enter a note, please enter a note value. There are different ways that you can go about this. We could simply have a standard text that populates this box, for instance, something that says enter a note here. And if the user does not enter anything, that value will be taken off and it will be pasted into our Excel spreadsheet. For us, we want to make sure that the user remembers to enter a note. So we want a little bit of extra protection against not entering a note here. So what I want to do, as opposed to using this section that says text, where we could type in enter a note, I want to control the note functionality through if statements. If we play this form, now at some point along the time, we can add the functionality of the project number and project name uh, we see that these, this user form opens, and as it opens this text box, you can see it says enter a note. Now if we click here, we could use the clear note and then start to manually type a note. We have that functionality here, but as I said, I did not want to go down that route. I want to add a little bit more protection, make sure that the user remembers that they need to enter a note. So the way that we're going to do that is go back to our main user form. We're going to remove this enter a note text here. Back to our main user form and we are going to add some functionality to the log out button. Now we're still not handling Excel, we're not pasting any of this information anywhere besides putting it on the screen. So really the only thing we're doing is we're gonna add a little bit of an extra step, a little bit of an if statement to that log out button. So if we view the code, in here we have a private sub for CMB log out click. And when we click the log out button, currently all that's happening is that text box is changing from red to green and we're changing the special effect to sunken. But what we want to do is we want to add some functionality to see if the note is empty. Now, in this point in time, we have our text box name. Now this text box name is called TXBX note. It's going to be very important to remember that. We want to handle an if statement. If TXBX note dot value is equal to an empty string, then we want to do this. And then down the way a little bit, we're going to have an end if statement. What we could also do is say that if txbx note value equals enter a note, then we know that the user hasn't entered anything. So if you want to use that standard text within the functionality of just using a text box, you can still use this conditional statement to figure out whether or not the user has added anything to it because it's going to be looking for an exact instance here. All right. So if txbx note, the text box, if the value of that text box is an empty string, two quotation marks directly next to each other, then what do we want to do? Well, we need to send a message to the user. Now, what this means is we're going to have to declare a new variable. So what I'm going to do all the way up to the top is I'm going to declare dim, and this is going to be note retval, so return value for my note functionality as, just like all the other return values, we're going to be using it as long. So down here in my if statement, if txbx note dot value equals an empty string, then we're going to do note retval equals swapp dot 
send MSG to user 2. Now we've already used this, but in this case, we're going to be giving them an option for yes, no, rather than just saying OK. So missing a note, do you want to create one now? So now the user is prompted with a question, telling them that they're missing a note, if, asking them if they want to create one now. We're going to add a comma. We decide what the icon is, SWMB question. Now again, all this information is located in the SOLIDWORKS API help file. If you want to figure out what these enumerations are, what options you have, then you can go in there. You can simply copy and paste these enumerations from it. Now I know that we have SWMB question because we're asking the user a question. Then next we have to determine what the buttons are, SWMB, yes, no. So now the user has the option to select either yes or no. Now it's very important when you're using send MSG to user 2 that you understand these enumerations. If I go into the help file and I look up send MSG to user 2, if we take a look at this, we have the enumerations for the icons and the buttons. The important thing here is going to be the return values. Now we're going to be returning a value if the user hits yes, that return value is going to be 6. If the user hits no, that return value is going to be 3. And this is what we're going to handle in our code. So back in our code we need to start a new if statement. We're going to say if note rep val equals 6, so if the user selected yes, then we're going to do something. In this case, it's going to be user form 3.show. And then we're going to do user form 1, which is the current user form that we're in, dot. Now, this text box, we basically we want to populate information on user form 1 with information from user form 3 in this case. So this is going to be user form 1, and this is going to be our txbx note dot. In this case, we're going to do dot value is equal to user form three, which is the user form we created for the note pop-up. Dot in our case for user form three, we're dealing with txbx note add, and you can see it pops up when I hit the period, so we don't have to explicitly remember all this information. Dot value. So what we're saying here is that the value of the text box note on user form one is populated with the information from the text box value on user form 3. And at that point we can unload user form 3. And then we have an else. Now we need to have an else statement here because if the user selects no, that they don't want to add a note, then we need to figure something out. Well, if the user doesn't want to add a note, then we're going to do txbx note, which is the name of the text box on user form 1, dot value is equal to something. So we can say user did not enter a note. And this is what's going to end up being populated inside of Excel. So it's very important that we know what's going on here, that if the user selects yes, we allow them to interact with that user form. If they select no, then we still populate that text value with something. Now because we have a separate if statement here, we need an end if there as well as an end if here to end the overall if statement. All right, so as we're looking at this form, if the user has entered a note into the user form one note area, then it won't do any of this stuff. It's just gonna skip over this and nothing else is gonna happen. To make sure that works, let's go ahead and add a message box. So we're gonna just say outside of if statement. So this way we know that it did not run through the if statement. Let's go ahead and save this program and let's go ahead and run the user form. We need to go ahead and add these values and then once the main user form comes up currently there's no note in here. If I click log out it's telling me I'm missing a note do you want to create one now? Now this is where we have the yes no box instead of just an OK. If I say yes user form 3 comes up type a note, hit save, outside of if statement. All right, well, we need to add a little bit more functionality to this. Let's go ahead and hop back into our code, go back into user form one. With our message box, instead of saying outside of statement, let's go ahead and add the value txbx note. 
So this way it's going to output the value of the note that we have. So let's go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and run through it again. All right, so currently there's no note there. If I log out, it tells me I'm missing a note. Yes, I want to add a note. I'm just going to type in new note, hit save outside of if statement, and then it says new note. There are no spaces here because I didn't add any, but it is displaying the new note. And you also see that it's now displaying the new note inside of this area. Now, the only reason it's doing that is because we haven't closed the user form. When you log out, you'll no longer see this information. We haven't gotten to that point yet. Again, we're just working through the functionality of everything. You need to take it one step at a time. You need to pick one aspect of the project that you want to handle that you want to do and then approach it and make sure that you get it to work, make sure that all the functionality works. Let's go ahead back into VBA. Let's take a look at the code one more time. So back in user form one, the CMB logout click, we have this if statement that we run through if the user does not enter a note value. We still need to check the functionality if the user's entered a note, we need to make sure that it doesn't run through this statement. So let's go ahead and let's play it one more time and let's enter a note value. All right, so now when we hit log out, we should not be prompted to enter a note because we do have a value here. And also this value should pop up on our message box. Okay, so we see outside of if statement, enter a note value. All right, so enter a note value is what we have here. So everything is working fine, the functionality is working. The reason this is so important because as we look at the code, whatever this value is, txbx note dot value, this is what's gonna be sent to Excel. So we need to know that if the user enters it on user form one, that we don't accidentally populate it with something like this. User did not enter a note. We want to make sure that this functionality works. So there's one more test that we need to do. Play the user form again. We're not going to enter a note. We're going to log out and we're going to say no. Now it says user did not enter a note. So we're pretty sure going through the user form that we've got the functionality nailed for the options for the user to enter a note. I know it was a long roundabout process in order to get that to work, but it was very important that we understand how to navigate through these options and how to give the user options, even though we don't want to create a new user form just for the yes, no option, we can use send MSG to user two. This will be prompted in SOLIDWORKS. Then we can determine the path to go from there, whether or not it's showing a user form, whether or not it's manually populating a value or simply popping back out and not doing anything. So these are all valid courses of action when we're talking about dealing with the function of adding a note in this case. If you guys have any questions on what we covered here, please let me know. Email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.